Financial Planner, Flow Us on YouTube. All roads lead to the cabal. Death is knocking at their door. Let's get into the economic collapse, political and geopolitical news. Now, as we know, Mueller came out yesterday and the corporate media is just playing this up. And they're going to keep pushing this idea that Mueller is on to something. This is Russian collusion. And we know he came out with all these charges against Manafort, Gates, and Papadopoulos. And we see at this point that if we look at the two indictments that that's part of the 12 we see that well do they really have something manafort and his associate rick gates they pleaded not guilty to all 12 counts of the indictment they have also issued a defined statement denying collusion with the russians during the election campaign rejecting arguments that they looted ukraine and insisting that, on the contrary, they help put Ukraine on a pro-European course, and ridiculing the suggestion that their transfers of money from overseas accounts into the U.S. amount to a conspiracy against the U.S. Now, on their claim that they assisted Ukraine to pursue a pro-European course, they are unquestionably right. As many have pointed out, it was President Yanukovych whom they advise, who took the fatal decision to negotiate an association agreement with the EU. The most important point, however, about the indictment against Manafort and Gates is that it does not touch on the collusion allegations which are central to the Russiagate scandal at all. Instead, Mueller has committed himself to prosecuting a very complex fraud case against Manafort and Gates on a wholly unrelated Ukraine-connected topic which is going to drain his resources. Now, what is going to make it even more difficult to motivate Mueller's pro um, prosecutors who will have to conduct this case is that at the back of their minds, they must know that it is highly likely that even if they secure Manafort's and Gates' conviction, the case will end up with a presidential pardon. Now, Papadopoulos, his indictment, it turns out that he's never been asked to give evidence to either the Senate Intelligence Committee or the House Intelligence Committee both of which are supposed to be investigating the Russiagate case. Now, when we look at this, we're seeing that he really didn't have a role in this whatsoever. Yes, he was out there, you know, mouthing off saying that, you know, he has connections with Russia and he over-exaggerated the extent of his Russian contacts in a message to the Trump campaign, according to court documents. In one email sent to the Trump campaign, Papadopoulos said, he has just been introduced to the Russian ambassador in London. He has since admitted that the pair never met. So basically everything from him is turning out to be fake, phony, and false. And he was a campaign volunteer. He was nothing, nobody important. And all attempts to get Trump to meet with Russians were rejected. So there's really nothing there at this point. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to distract everyone from what is really going on. And what we're seeing right now is that the corporate media thinks that this is a slam dunk. They they finally have their Russian collusion. And what's going to happen is this whole thing is going to backfire on them. Because what they're going to see is that this whole thing is going to fall apart. And if we really look at the indictment, if we look further into it, what we see is that the violation that they're talking about where he didn't register as a foreign agent, well, it is a violation that the Justice Department really prosecutes criminally. Now, there is a gray area about whether the person's actions trigger the registration requirement. So the Justice Department's practice is to encourage people to register, not indict them for failing to do so. The money laundering conspiracy allegation, count two, seems far from slam dunk. For someone to be guilty of laundering the money involved has to be the proceeds of a criminal activity before the accused starts concealing it by moving it through accounts or changing its form by buying assets, dodging a reporting requirement under federal law, but the prosecution still has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the money was the proceeds of unlawful activity in the first place, 
Moreover, the prosecution must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Manafort and Gate knew the money was the proceeds of illegal activity and transported the money the way they did with specific intent of avoiding having to register as a foreign agent. And this is going to be very difficult to do. Now, this doesn't mean that they won't be able to do it, but this is a very tough case. Now, Trump is out there and he's calling out the Podesta group saying, listen, he's calling on the Podesta brothers to drain the swamp by dishing whatever earth shattering dirt they might have on the Democrats to this special counsel Mueller. Now, what's happening here is that they're going to be digging into this and they're going to, if they're going down the Ukrainian path, they're going to find a lot of other things that are hidden. And I still believe that Mueller was in there to hide a lot of this so they can't find certain information. John Podesta is out there saying that now I'm the victim of a big lie campaign by the American president. First Russia cyber attacks the election. We were victims then. Now I'm a victim now. And it sounds like he's just complaining because he got caught. And again, what we're seeing here is that the whole thing's starting to unravel. Now, what's very interesting is Russia, Sergei Lavrov, he's out there saying, listen, we have the Ukrainian trail with Manafort. Now, Manafort, he was not alone. We know the Podesta group was dealing with Ukraine. We know Obama was dealing with Ukraine. We know there's a lot of different individuals, the Clintons dealing with Ukraine. He's saying, listen, the U.S. investigators need to start looking at the Ukrainian trail. That's where the answer is to all of this. Follow the paperwork, follow the money, and it will lead you to what was really going on in this area. And I agree with him. This is where it's all going to fall apart for the cabal. Manafort is meaningless at this point because once things start to come out, and we know that Trump, he has the dirt on all of this. He's He's pushing out information a little bit at a time because he wants people to question it. Look at the Dems, look at Ukraine, look at the Podesta group, look at Clinton's. And they want people to start questioning, saying, okay, if Manafort was involved in this and Clinton's were involved in the Uranium One deal and the Fusion GPS, maybe there's something else here. Maybe we should start looking into this. And he's trying to push everyone in this general direction. And as we move forward, we're going to start to see this really break down and the corporate media, this is where everything's going to start to unravel, just like the Russian collusion. They're going to lose the narrative. Nothing's going to be proven. Yes, they're hyped up right now. People are believing it, but it's going to slowly fall apart. And all of a sudden, information's going to come out because, you know, Trey Gowdy's going to get involved. More information is going to come out about the Clintons, about the Podesta group, what was really going on with Obama the unmasking, everything that we talked about before, it's all going to start to come out. Now, this doesn't mean that they're going to try to block it. We know that they've been planning certain events. We know they're, the FBI is out there having a drill in an amusement park. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see some type of an event to distract from all of this so everyone completely forgets. And it's going to have to be pretty darn big. Just like when the Pentagon came out and they said they were missing twenty uh, ten trillion dollars, all of a sudden planes hit uh, the the World Trade Center. We had nine eleven, and then no one said a word. And I think what's going to happen here, there's going to be something pretty darn big where everyone is going to forget, and the news stories are going to switch to something completely different. And I I would expect this to happen when more information comes out. So this is what we're going to have to watch and see how this all you know plays out here. We see that the Catalan leader, the president there, is now agree, agreeing to snap elections. He says he's not seeking asylum from Belgium, but if he gets permission or he gets guarantees from the Spain Spanish government, he will return to Spain. And it looks like this independence referendum might be going absolutely nowhere. Now, we're going to have to see how the people react to this. It's either they can stay quiet and say, okay... We're staying with Spain or they can really push this and say, no, 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 we want our independence. And what's very interesting about this is that the U.S. is saying that, you know, no, no, we don't agree with this. The EU is out there. We don't agree with this. But if we look at all the other times that they did agree to it, like Syria, where this was a non-grassroots uprising, this was created 
by the cabal. They were all for it, and that led to war with millions of people dying, refugees leaving the country. They were for that. Ukraine, horrible. People died. The country was split up. They were all for that, having people have regime change and independence. But the grassroots uprising in Catalonia, they're completely against this. They don't want this to happen because, guess what? It doesn't serve their purpose. That's why. It actually goes against everything that they want to do. It makes more and more of these smaller countries, and they don't want this. They want one gigantic country because they're looking for a one-world government. We see that the Saudi foreign minister claims that Iran has been blocking peace efforts in Yemen. No, Iran is not blocking any peace efforts. What's happening here is Saudi has started the war backed by the U.S., backed by the cabal. They can't make any headway in Yemen because they want their oil. They want to control Yemen. They want the puppet regime back in there. And they're blaming this on Iran because they can't get what they want. Russia has begun construction of two nuclear plants in Iran. They started this up. Uh, this was a two 10 billion nuclear reactors. And it looks like right now that they're building these. And it looks like Iran plans to build about 20 more nuclear plants in the future. And we can see they're moving forward with this. We see Iraq is now preparing to take control of the crossing between Kurdistan region and Syria. So they're going to be taking control of the border. Now, Iraq and Syria, they've been taking more and more of the border, controlling what has been going on. And what is happening here is since they can control the border, the supplies, the military assets to the paid mercenaries, to the Syrian Democratic Forces, to all of this is coming to an end. And this is ending very, very quickly right now. And like I said, this is going to accelerate and the cabal is going to lose control of the Middle East. The Middle East is falling right now. The people of these countries are taking back control. And I, I wouldn't be surprised in the next couple of weeks, there is an announcement from Syria, from Russia, asking the coalition forces to remove themselves from Syria. And really, they will have no choice unless they maybe have some type of an event to say, we need to stay here because, whoa, there's a new surge of the Islamic State. And once again, we remember they did smuggle, smuggle in a tactical nuke into Syria. This is going back. A couple of uh, maybe even a year ago and it might I think they smuggled into Aleppo it might still be there so they might use this as one last type of effort to gain control so this is something that we have to watch North Korea is out there and they are denouncing Britain's allegations that North Korea was involved in the global ransomware attack of uh, the wanna cry and all the rest and they're saying that we have nothing to do with this whatsoever now of course there is no proof the experts are out there saying well this code looks familiar and when we're looking at the code it looks like it might be north korean code no i mean that is absolutely ridiculous in what they're saying remember the cia vault 7 they can mimic any code and leave little breadcrumbs within the code to make it look like it came from another country. Do you really think a country who's going to do something like this is going to leave footprints? That would be absolutely ridiculous. But this ransomware attack hit up to about 300,000 computers in 150 countries. And we can see that they're building this idea that North Korea is behind this to convince everyone that they have the ability to cyber attack ask for ransoms to shut down computer systems and they're dealing in cryptocurrency now the reason why they're doing this is they're trying to build up the propaganda that north korea might be hitting the united states europe with maybe phishing emails to bring down the power infrastructure that they might hit the financial institutions they might freeze everything up because again their goal is to bring us to war they need to build the propaganda, make it look like North Korea has the ability to do this. Just like when they came out with the Sony attack, this was a disgruntled employee. This had nothing to do with North Korea, but they needed to push the idea that North Korea was behind this because eventually what they wanted to do is get into North Korea. So they started the propaganda. They were all ready to go into North Korea, and this was during the Obama administration. And if Clinton got elected we be at war already now i'm going to tell you right now trump at this point is not looking to go into north korea and invade behind the scenes right now we have europe 
We have China, Russia, even Duterte going to Japan and saying, listen, we all need to talk. The South Koreans, they do not want war whatsoever. Everyone wants to have a diplomatic resolution to this problem. And this is why China, Russia have been working so ho- so hard at this. And I think Trump and Tillerson have been playing bad cop, good cop to keep the corporate mo- corporate media you know, all confused of what's going on, making everyone think we're going to war. Just like the corporate media thought we were going to invade Syria when Trump launched the missile systems that hit absolutely nothing because Russia and the Syrian government were warned ahead of time. And think about what happened since that period of time. Well, the Islamic State has lost their grip on Syria. The Syrian Democratic Forces, the moderate rebels, have lost their grip. Al-Qaeda lost their grip. The Kurd division, their referendum, went nowhere. And now the United States, the coalition forces, are going to be asked to leave because Russia and Syria have full control of the country. So the actual opposite has happened. Same thing in Iraq. The same thing is happening in all of these countries. The same thing is going to happen in North Korea. And we're going to see this happen very soon because the cabal, well, they're being backed into a corner. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to try something because they still have power. They still have the ability to do things as we've seen with other events that they've been using. And it looks like they might be pushing the next event. And this time period is getting closer and closer as everything falls apart around them. So we need to watch out very carefully because we see the amusement park. Those drills are going on. We know that they've been building up the cyber attack. We know the Pentagon was out there saying, listen, we're very worried about some country or some entity hitting the stock market and bringing it down. We already know there's kill switches in places in place for all these different markets. And we can see right now that the bail in documents are already ready. So all they need to do is announce it. They don't have to prove anything, and all they have to do is shut everything down to scare people. They can black out different cities. I believe that 2000 East Coast blackout, that was a test to see if they were able to do it. Janet Napolitano, when she was head of DHS and she was leaving, said it's not if, but when there is a cyber attack. And remember, according to NATO and the U.S., a cyber attack is an act of war. So it looks like this might be their next event. They won't have to do that much to scare the public into doing what they want. And this is what we're watching right now. 